everyone, welcome back to the second part of the absolutely massive art haul video. <laughs> In this one I'm going to be swatching um, the paints that I bought, so there's a mixture of watercolour and gouache, I'll talk you through them as I do it. If you haven't watched the unboxing, I mean you don't have to watch it before you watch this video, you might want to watch this video and then go back and watch it, but it's the video before this one on my channel so it'll be easy for you to find. Um, thank you everyone for your amazing responses to that video, I think it's like one of my most successful videos so far, so um, that was really exciting and it was lovely to chat with you in the comments, I really enjoy the aspect of being on YouTube, I've had a lot of great advice from people regarding watercolours, so thank you if you're one of the people who has left a comment giving me some tips and advice. Advice. I'm going to be putting these paints into palettes but not today, that's going to be in a future video because I'm going to be making up all sorts of different um, palettes for different subjects, different themes, um, so that will be a series of videos in its own right but today we're just going to have fun swatching for the first time these gorgeous paints. I've been waiting so long to do this. <laughs> I've had these paints, I've been saving them up for probably about two months now. So I don't know how I have managed to not play around with them yet, but um, I must have willpower that I didn't know I had. I basically just wanted to share them with you. So um, I thought that would be nice to wait and do it for the first time. So I think the best way to swatch them, I'm not going to do them in order of any colour. I'm going to actually do them um, in brand order. So maybe we'll start with the Daniel Smith. I seem to have a lot of those, so I think that's what we'll do. Okay, let's get started. This is very exciting. I have so many paints here and I think that what I might do is swatch the gouache paints. I have some Winsor & Newton gouache here. Um, I have nine of those. What I might do is separate this video up into two different videos. We'll swatch all of the watercolours today and then we'll do the Winsor & Newton gouache We'll look at the Etcher sketchbooks. I have two watercolour sketchbooks and I really want to show you those in a bit more depth. So I'll do those in the gouache video and we'll also swatch the pencils. I just find that swatching takes some time to really show things properly and um, if I do everything it's going to end up like an hour long or something, <laughs> which maybe some of you don't mind, but I think it's probably better if we can keep the length of these videos down a little bit. We're going to start with Jane's Grey. I've already squeezed some out into my palette. Speed things up a bit. It's so gorgeous, it looks really inky. Um, right, okay, let's think about how we're going to swatch these. I think if I do them like this, I need to give big enough swatch so we can see what the pigments do. <laughs> I mean I probably could have made that a bit lighter at the top, we'll just do this and just see, just add a little bit more water just so it can move around a bit. Okay, the next one we're going to swatch is, I think we'll go for Sugalite Genuine next. So that's one of the Primatech paints, the mineral pigments. That one was much harder to get out of the tube. So the Jane's Grey was very juicy and this one was, was much harder, but actually Add a bit of water and it was fine. And actually once it started coming out of the tube it didn't want to stop. <laughs> so I had to quickly put the lid back on. Sorry, my swatches are not going to be of even size. This is just so that I can try these quickly and have a reference. I'll keep this swatch sheet with my other loose swatch sheets and um, 
it's good for me to have a reference. I'll also actually swatch these in my watercolour swatch book, which um, I just started the other day. Okay, the next one I'm going to swatch is Mayan Dark Blue. And this is one I've been intrigued with for a long time. It looks really inky. It's like, um, it reminds me a little bit of their Indigo, which is one of my favourite paints of all time. Gosh, that's gorgeous. It's like you can really feel the quality. <laughs> They may be a little bit more pricey, but I'm kind of at the stage now where I feel like it's worth spending the extra money on really good quality materials. Gosh, that is gorgeous. I can really imagine this in like a night landscape or for my um, rain clouds, like my storm clouds. Okay, the next one is gonna be Moon Glow. So I'm really excited about this one because I've wanted to try Moon Glow for so long. And there's a little bit of um, uncertainty about Moon Glow because um, some people have said that despite Daniel Smith saying it's light fast, that it isn't light fast. Um, I forget who it was, but somebody did a light fast test on it. Um, and they discovered that it in fact wasn't light fast. But then I looked it up the other day and on Jane Blundell's blog, she had done her own light fast tests and she found that it was light fast. So I don't know what to think, but I think what I might do is do my own tests because we're coming into spring now and so throughout the spring and summer, I have a really big windowsill, really wide windowsill um, in the studio. So it's perfect for putting some swatches on and I can leave them there all summer. And the window gets a lot of light in the summer. So I will report back if I see any changes in the swatches. Um, I'll let you know about that. I think that could be quite interesting to test a few of the paints where we're not entirely sure whether they're light fast. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other one was. Oh, I know what it was. It was in this little set here, the um, Serene to Dramatic Blues. Um, this is a Daniel Smith um, set of six, and it has a Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine, and apparently that isn't light fast either. Um, so I will do my own tests and then I'll report back to you. Right, the next one is going to be So Delight Genuine. Gosh, this looks really dark. This is much darker than I expected, but in a good way. Oh, wow. <laughs> I already know I love it. Actually, this is really like an indigo. This is gorgeous. So there's some kind of weird vibration happening in here. I don't know whether the camera's picking it up and I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> but You can hear something sort of rattling. So sorry if that's annoying. Gosh, that's really nice. Don't these look beautiful together? I want to make some really interesting, um, either blues and earths, maybe blues and greys palettes. I'm just having a look. I'm getting up and having a look from above on the screen and yeah. They really do look gorgeous. I'm gonna hold them up just so you can have a closer look. So this one here is Jane's Grey. They're still drying, they're still quite wet, so we'll have a look at them when they're dry. This one is um, Sugar Light Genuine. This one is Mayan Dark Blue, Moon Glow, and Soda Light Genuine. A 
I love what the moon glow is doing. It's really separating and the different colours are coming out. I'm loving these. I mean, some of them are quite similar. At the moment, the Payne's Grey looks quite similar to the Soda Light, but we're going to allow them to dry and we're going to see what they look like when they're dry. And I'm just going to, I think, adjust the light slightly because it's getting darker outside now. And I think we might need a little bit of extra light. So I'm just going to bring this round. Gosh, what a gorgeous green. Okay, so let's pop this here. Oh, wow. Actually, all these colours are wow. I kind of realise why Daniel Smith is such a popular brand. I mean, I do have a few Daniel Smith paints already. For those of you who saw my video where I was swatching all of my watercolour and gouache collection, um, that was before I bought these. <laughs> it was my existing collection. Um, Dominic's mum and dad actually bought a couple of small sets. It was like the, are they called the essentials set? You get six colours, um, you get the primary colours, um, a cool and a warm tone of each. Um, they bought me that set for my birthday a couple of years ago and also a set of the Primatech paints. Um, that was a collection of six as well. And I've used them a little bit, but I haven't really been doing much watercolour painting at all. And then I suddenly had an urge to get back into it. I used to paint in watercolour years ago, but I kind of switched to acrylic and gouache. I kind of thought that I liked more opaque paints, but I don't know why I have suddenly completely fallen in love with the translucent, transparent qualities of watercolour and the way it reacts with the water and these beautiful um, textures and patterns you get. And this is something I'm quite surprised about because I didn't think that I would be as excited by this as I am. And um, so it's come as quite a surprise to me. And I'm not 100% sure <laughs> why. Um, oh, the phthalo turquoise has just exploded. That is literally going to go everywhere unless I get the lid on. ASAP. Right, I think I've averted disaster, although it's all over my fingers. Um, yes, I'm very into using watercolour again and I want to really experiment with it this time and push myself out of my comfort zone and try and learn everything I can. I mean, I don't feel like I know that much really about watercolour, despite the fact I used it years ago. I mean, the only thing I knew was the colours I liked, basically. I wasn't really into um, knowing about the pigments or anything like that. And it's just so fascinating once you start learning about it. Gosh, this is absolutely... It's so vibrant. Look at this. I don't know how much of that is showing up on camera. I think this is going to look stunning when it dries, this one. We will see. Gosh, I, I literally, I cannot get over these colours. Right, the last one, transparent pyrrole orange. We will, I'm going to open it over here just in case it decides to explode. Oh, it didn't. It's all right. Yes, by the way, I decided to write the names underneath. For those of you who... Um, would like to just sort of refer back to it. It's much easier if the names are underneath while I'm recording the video. Oh, this is super bright and vibrant. I wanted this one for um, an autumn palette that I'm going to be putting together. I think this is going to be a great one just for my um, larger general palette as well. Gosh, it's so pure, that colour. It's so interesting to see how these dry. 
some are so much more granulating than others and that is the joy of watercolour okay so we're going to go on to the little set I have here if I can get into it yeah I think that this is a real watercolour journey for me and you're coming along with me and we'll see what we discover okay so this was the little bit of I don't know what this is polystyrene stuff <laughs> that they used to cover the paints and so they're set out like that um, you will have seen this if you watched the actual unboxing video um, but you get six half pans um, different shades of blue and then they give you all of these empty pans that um, come out and you can just um, fill with your own choice of paint. So I think what I'm going to do with this palette, because it's blues anyway, I kind of already had it in my mind that I was going to fill it with my Daniel Smith blues, greys and blacks. Um, I'm kind of tempted <laughs> to put things like the violet -y moon glow and the sea light genuine in as well, but we'll see. I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine empty pans to fill so um yeah i'll have to make some choices i think because i do have as i said earlier some daniel smith colors already and um some of those could actually go in here too Let's see if i can get this on i have to lay it on there it's a bit difficult trying to get everything in shot by the way i'm going to explain to you later why <laughs> the label has been pulled off this We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first one, and that's the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. I don't know how much I have to wet these. We'll find out, won't we? Right, so I'm going to do, I'm going to set them out as they're set out in the palette, actually. I think that'll be quite nice. So we'll just do little, maybe we'll go that way and make them longer in that direction. That's a stunning colour. When I saw someone else swatch this, um, it looked really quite pale, but mine is very pigmented and very vibrant. I don't know, maybe I've just used more water and I've kind of activated it more or something. Okay, so the one underneath this, what is the one underneath this? <laughs> yeah, how do we know which is which? Oh, I have a feeling, is this the soda light? It looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like the one I swatched there. I'm so happy that I have two so delights because it means that I can well obviously I have one in this palette already so I can use my tube for my other palettes because I think that this is the kind of colour that I would use a lot so I can imagine it would be in probably at least three different palettes I'm going to be making themed palettes as well as um, a general palette where I have all of my favourite colours or most used colours and good mixing colours and things like that. This must be cerulean. Ah, this is very transparent and gentle. Very soft kind of colour. Very pretty. I love this blues palette. I looked at all of their palettes and um, watched people swatching them on YouTube so I could get an idea of what they looked like before I bought them. And um, I decided to just start with this one and see how I liked it. But I have my eye on the, I think it's called Desert to Mountains, and it is actually in my cart on the Jackson's website. I may be making a purchase, although not yet, because I've spent so much on art materials recently. Oh, actually, now I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking that this one is probably the soda light. I wonder, I'm gonna have to look at that box and see how we know which is which. I'll also be making, by the way, little watercolour colour charts for my palettes when I've put them together so that when I open up the palette I immediately have it um, close to hand and I know which paint is which. Yeah, I think that that one is um, soda light. Okay, let's see, how do we know which is which? They're swatched out like that on the reverse. They look like that <laughs> on the side. Am I being dense or something? Okay, so I found the leaflet. <laughs> this came in with the paints and I'm assuming it has them in exactly the order there in the palette. Um, this shows you all of the different Daniel Smith sets that you can get. And uh, yeah, so that's Sleeping Beauty. That's Cerulean Blue. That one is Indigo. And I thought it might be so delight until I swatched that one, didn't I? I can see now that this is drying slightly. Um, I would say it has a slightly purplish tinge to it. So that's the indigo I know and love because I have a small tube of that already. Um, so the next ones are gonna be Luna Blue and Payne's Blue Grey. So it'll be interesting to see how the Payne's Blue Grey looks against the Payne's Grey. Um, I know people tease me about my love of Payne's Grey, but yeah, I love it. I'm not, I'm not apologetic. <laughs> you can never have too many tubes of different Payne's Greys. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. <laughs> if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Right, so let's have a go with this one. I'm very excited to try Luna Blue. I heard good things about this paint and it's a good little mixer. So we might be doing some videos in the future. mixing it with other colours. Beautiful. Reminds me very slightly of um, the Mayan Blue Genuine, which I also have. Um, okay, so last one from this set. Sorry, this keeps going off the screen. <laughs> Um, it's a bit hard to have it on the screen because I need space for my arm. So this one is the Payne's Blue Grey. So I took a break there and I just thought I would write out all of the paint information so it's already there and we just swatch above it each time. So I've separated it out into categories. So obviously we have all of the Daniel Smith at the top, we have the Schmincke, the Holbein, Windsor and Newton Professional, and then on this second sheet of paper we're going to do the Jackson's Artist Watercolour and the Roman Schmoll. I've swatched out the palette as they were in the palette and one thing I discovered actually while I was doing all of this was, it says on the back of the pack here, that the little palette came in, um, Daniel Smith uses the exact same formula for both tube and hand poured pan colours. So there, that answers a question I had, which was whether the um, paint in the tubes is different to the paint in the pans, because I know in this pan we have two um, Primatec colours, the turquoise and the soda light down here and I have heard um, there are quite a few people who say you shouldn't really put the tubes of Primatec paint into a palette like this because when they dry hard they're really hard to re-wet. Now this could be the case and I was worried about this but I found these two really easy to re-wet. So I think what I'm going to do, seeing as Daniel Smith says the formula is the same um, whether it's in a tube or a pan, I'm going to 
try and squeeze <laughs> some of the Primatech paints into the palettes when I come to make the palettes. So um, I'll give it a go. We'll test it with a small amount. And then if it seems to re-wet just fine, I will add some more. But I think um, one of the tips I did here, now obviously I'm not experienced at this yet, so this is just um, what I've heard. I don't have any personal experience, is that you should, if paints are hard to re-wet in the pan, just add a few drops of water from your paintbrush or maybe a spray bottle to them for a couple of minutes before you're going to use them and it just helps to kind of reactivate the pigment so I will try this and I will report back I'm going to let you know how I get on with all of this so we'll make discoveries along the way and <laughs> we'll find out what's what but at the moment um, yeah this is all very new to me so I'm not somebody who has ever used watercolour paint in a pan. I've always used it in tubes. So I'm going to get on with the rest of the swatching. What I'm going to do is film this and speed up the footage or we are literally going to be here forever because it's taken quite a long time to do those ones. <laughs> someone said to me in the comment section of the art hall video that apparently these Jackson's artist watercolors were supposedly Sennelier watercolors just repackaged so apparently if I take off this sticky label underneath I should be able to see the Sennelier um, emblem on the um, packaging so on the tube rather so I tried, what I've tried to do is pull off this label. They are really, really sticky. It kept coming off in bits. I literally can't get any more of it off without, see if I pick at it, just the tiniest bit. Oh, hold on, we've got a little bit there. No, just the tiniest bit comes off. But as far as I can see, it just looks like a plain metal tube. I can't actually see any evidence of any other branding under there and I did try another one just to be um, extra diligent <laughs> and as you can see it comes off really in such a, a difficult way you can't peel these labels off easily at all so I think judging by what I can see this just looks like a plain metal tube, so I don't know um, what that's all about. Um, I do know that these are made in France. I looked on the Jackson's website. They say they're made in France. They say they're made to the same high standards and specifications as other top brand watercolors, but without the really expensive price tag. So, are these Sennelier? We don't know. Um, it remains a mystery for now, but I'm going to swatch them for you and we'll have a look at them.
So here are the finished swatches and I'm absolutely thrilled with this colour palette. I actually ordered these as um, additional colours to the colours I already own but I think they make a brilliant palette in their own right which I wasn't expecting and um, yeah you already know how much I love the Daniel Smith. Just the granulation, the colour separation, the textures, the richness of the colour, everything about them I love and they've actually exceeded my expectations. I'm completely in love with the Shell Pink from Holbein. It goes really well with the Raw Sienna and also I thought with an Indigo as well, the three look really great. The Roman Schmal paints I was really impressed with too. This is the first time I've used these and um, I found the Green Earth slightly harder to re-wet than the other two but after I let the water sit on it for just a couple of minutes it was absolutely fine. They're going to be a great addition to my palette. The Windsor and Newton paints were all so nice to use but I think the standout three for me personally are the Caput Morton Violet, the Potter's Pink and the Rose Deray. Those three together just look amazing and it already inspires me just looking at these swatches so I'm really excited to get to work and actually use them in my artwork. The Schmincke paints had such a lovely creamy consistency, they were like really juicy paints and just look at that forest blue, oh my goodness, it is more beautiful in person than I expected. I love their paints grey bluish, this also was a really interesting paint and the Indian red is very similar to the Caput Mortem Violet but there is enough of a difference between the two to um, I think justify having both of them and these are colours that I know I'm going to use over and over again because they really fit in with my general colour palette. The Jackson's Artist Watercolour are a really great paint for a great price so if you're new to watercolour or you just want to add to your collection I have to say these seem like very professional quality paints I think they're exactly as Jackson's say that they are made to the industry standards um, of some of the best watercolour paints out there excuse my Naples yellow swatch it got contaminated with a slightly dirty brush but it's actually a really nice creamy yellow which um, is my kind of yellow I just love that I mainly just ordered earth colors from the Jackson's watercolor range because I felt like I needed more of those in my palette but of course I couldn't resist adding another Payne's gray and can we just note what a gorgeous Payne's gray this is it was the little half pan and it reworked beautifully and they're so inexpensive and I just think this is one of the nicest Payne's grays I've ever seen before I forget I meant to mention this earlier on in the video this is probably not a good idea just to mention this at the end but um, I totally forgot I now have a Jackson's link that's specific to me in the description beneath each of the videos well every new video from now onwards if you use this link to go to Jackson's and place an order then if you're a new customer you'll get 10% off your first order and that will be applied automatically at checkout I believe you don't need a code or anything if you're not a new customer but if you want to go to Jackson's and place an order if you use this link it will really help me and this channel out because Jackson's will give me a small percentage commission each time you place an order at no extra cost to you so as long as you go through the link you can buy anything you like and um, yeah and I get a little commission which really Really helps to fund this channel so thank you if you decide to do that I know several of you have done it already because I put it on a couple of previous videos and I noticed that I've had some orders which I was really chuffed about so thank you if you did that and the only other thing I need to mention before I go is this gorgeous crema pigments greys palette is going to have a video all to itself I'm gonna swatch the colors for you and talk about the paint and then I'm gonna create some artwork so that will be in a separate video Video, but the next one up is going to be the third part of the art haul where I swatch the pencils and the gouache paints and I'll show you the Etcher sketchbooks. If you're still here right at the end of this very long video, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all of your lovely comments, your likes, your subscriptions. It really makes these videos a joy to make and share with you. So thank you and I will see you again very soon. Thank you.